Hi, welcome to How to Repair. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how we go about going through the test procedure on washing machine motors. In other words, bench testing them. Sometimes I'm able to test washing machine motors and make sure they're in good condition on the machine, especially when something like the bearings are gone. But on other occasions, when the washing machine circuit board is gone, I'm unable to test the motors. So I actually have to use my test equipment for doing this. This is basically a DC voltage regulator connected up to a meter, and this is something I built for my workshop per specifically. Uh, we get a lot of washing machines donated to us either via general public or some companies are good enough to actually donate machines to us on a weekly basis so we have a constant supply of machines to make videos for you in repairs. Uh, RDS International for example pick up from shops and warehouses all around the country in the UK and they make sure that the old machines that you basically have collected are disposed of in an environmental friendly manner. These machines come to us and sometimes we're able to make videos on these machines uh, and repair them and then resell the machines. On other occasions we have to scrap the machines because they're uneconomical to repair. So I wanted to quickly show you the test procedure that we go through to make sure these motors are not just compliant with earthing standards or uh, insulation standards but also making sure that they have good life left in them. Making sure that the bearings are good, the armature is good and also the carbon brushes are inspected. So let me take you through this test procedure that we do quickly. Okay, these two motors are off Bosch, Neff and Siemens machines and when it comes to the Bosch, Neff and Siemens machines I have test leads specifically made for clockwise and anti-clockwise rotation. This is to test the motor in both directions because without having it connected to the original washing machine I'm unable to do that with just connecting hot wiring straight up to the motor. So before we even start on this the first thing we need to inspect is the carbon brushes and making sure that the armature is in good condition. Now, when it comes to carbon brushes, we sell new carbon brushes at the website for all makes and models of machines. And I actually have different test leads for different manufacturers. Uh, this one is off a Hoover machine. I have Hotpoint, Beco, Miele, so on. So the first thing we do is inspect the carbon brushes. And basically, I will just undo the connection point on these, remove the carbon brush, and as you can see here, the carbon brush is about a quarter of a way through its life. There is plenty of life left in this carbon brush. Now, when it comes to fitting carbon brushes, especially with Bosch, Neff and Siemens machines, it's very important to note that the carbon brush slides down the holder easily. In other words, there's no restriction whatsoever. Because a lot of people fit carbon brushes and they don't realize that the old ones, because they have been worn, get exceedingly hot and therefore sometimes can damage the holders that they sit in and the carbon brush will be very sticky. The second thing to notice is when you look at the alignment of the carbon brush, this carbon brush on the left hand side has to go in with the edge so it sits flat against the armature. So you need to make sure it goes in in the correct way. Now I'll just quickly reinsert this. It just goes under the pin system there. Then you push it down and lift the carbon brush up so it locks in place. Once it's locked in place, then I'm able to put the holder or the spade connector back on. There are a couple of different variations for Bosch, Neff and Siemens washing machine motors. In Europe you may have a brand like Barley or Constructor, but it's very important to match the carbon brushes up to your motor correctly. In other words, you will need your full model number, which is usually on Bosch, Neff and Siemens called an ERN number, and this will be on the identification plate in the door or on the back of the machine. The second thing we need to do is turn the machine over, and if you look closely in here and I'll zoom in for you. Okay what we're doing here is physically checking the armature. As you can see the commutator has many lugs all the way around. Now I'm just going to use my finger and rotate the armature all the way around a couple of times 
and what I'm feeling for is any high points on the commutator. Um, what can happen is a washing machine motor that has worn carbon brushes will get exceedingly hot on the armature and therefore the lugs on the commutator can sometimes raise because they've been distorted with heat and this would cause the motor to eat the carbon brushes and also cause the motor to maybe either trip the electricity supply or create a direct short. Now this armature is absolutely perfectly smooth. If you have a worn armature you can see another video at the website on how I clean up the armature using the commutator stick which is basically uh, wet and dry paper very very fine that I'm able to rotate the motor and sand these lugs down. Uh, this would actually clean up the armature and make the armature good again. Uh, not all occasions you can do that. So we physically expected both carbon brushes and there's plenty of life on the carbon brush. Okay, we've inspected the motor manually and I've also inspected this off camera and we want to make sure the motor is working correctly. Now as I said I have basically lots of test leads I've made up over the years and one goes clockwise, one goes anti-clockwise and they're wired through to the actual meter uh, so I can actually test the motor. So the first thing I need to do is connect the earth then I'm going to put the one connector in now this is a six pin motor and this one is a seven pin motor. So I'm gonna turn the ampage down to bare minimum and I will turn this sideways on so you can see this rotating and I will turn the motor on. This is at low RPM and you can hear the motor just building up. I'm able to see from experience, I can see that it's only drawing 60, 70 watts of power and now I can crank it up. And what I'm looking for inside is any excess sparking on the armature. And this one's quite nice. There's just a small amount of speckling sparkling, which is the DC going across onto the armature. And I can quickly turn it up to full power, which is more than it would normally have. And that's perfect. Turning it right down again. Disconnecting it now from the power supply. Ready to do an opposite rotation. The reason I never actually built in any switching gear to this to actually rotate it, because if I rotated accidentally at the moment, the voltage to the other circuit, it would make the motor jump. So I'm just waiting for this motor to stop. And I will disconnect the harness, and this one was clockwise. So now I'm doing it in an anti-clockwise rotation. And I'm able to start again. Again, it's rotating anti-clockwise this time. Again, on this side, I'm able to see that the motor is only drawing 70 watts of power. Crank it up a bit. The bearings are in good condition. The armature's not sparking. This motor is in perfect working condition. Just turning it flat out. And at flat out, it's drawing about 100 and 300 watts of power which is more than it would be on the actual machine itself. So I'll just turn that off. Now this motor, for example, is off a different model of machine, and it is a seven pin motor. But the six pin harness will actually do the same, testing the lower fields, not the higher field. I have a separate lead for testing both sides, and I'm not going to bother in this video. Let me just disconnect this a second. Bring this motor across, and as you can see here, um, I've done a detailed video on the Bosch uh, machines showing you the wiring configuration that's at the website. Uh, basically, the two wires go to the tachometer, which sends the information to the circuit board. The other two wires go to the carbon brushes, and the other two wires go to the fields on the motor. The seven pin testing system goes to both fields, uh, but that can be seen basically at the website. So I'm just quickly going to connect this up. Got to make sure the lugs go in the correct location. And that's in. And now let me turn the motor sideways, make sure I connect the earth. Now you can see here that the motor is taking a little bit less power because it's a more powerful armature on uh, windings on this. But I'll crank it up. And as you can hear, no sparking on the actual carbon brushes. The bearings are quite quiet for the motor being so close to the microphone, but I know this from experience. 
turning it down, turning it off. No, I'm not going to break it. I'll wait for it to stop. These motors can also be repurposed, by the way, for things like sanding machines. Uh, you could use these on multiple bench uh, equipment for woodworking, lathes and other bits and pieces. There are many videos on YouTube where people have repurposed washing machine motors. So let me just unplug the harness here. And plug the other one in for the other rotation. Again, checking this in the anti-clockwise rotation. You can hear the motor is nice and quiet. Of course, it's not under load, but I do know from experience that this motor is absolutely very quiet. Cranking it up now. No sparking on the armature at all. And that motor is also in perfect working condition. And that's how I go through the procedure of making sure that the motors that we repurpose for other people to save money are actually in good condition. You will always see some cosmetic signs of rust because sometimes they are in a damp environment. But the actual mechanics of the motor are in perfect working condition. So if you do need a washing machine motor for your machine, let me explain. First thing you need to do is ascertain the part number for the motor for the washing machine. Now these two motors are basically different part numbers and they fit Pacific models. But once you've actually ascertained which model of machine you've got, you could possibly go through to the website, put the model number in. We may have a second hand motor for you. If we don't, you can always send us an email and we'll have a look at what motors are available. Sometimes we haven't got them a second hand and sometimes you have to buy new. The carbon brushes, as I said, we have many, many carbon brushes for all makes and models of machines. But where we can, we try to recycle the motors off machines so they just don't go in the landfill because it's such a waste, especially in this environment today. I hope this video helped you. I hope you found it informative. Please remember to buy any parts off us. That's what keeps us going and able to make these videos for you. And also, if we really help you in any way, you can always donate to the website by clicking on the Buy Paula Beer page. And here's a bit of information about RDS International and their trade services that they have around the country. Thanks again for watching. RDS International is leading the way in environmental responsibility, exclusively serving trade customers, businesses and shops. We're committed to ensuring white goods don't end up in landfills. Operating throughout the UK, we strictly adhere to the WE directive, guaranteeing that appliances are disposed of in compliance with regulations. Beyond mere disposal, we breathe new life into refrigeration units by repurposing them for developing nations. And a special note for our trade partners, for every load we dispose of on your behalf, we pledge to plant a tree, ensuring it springs to life. Our primary objectives are distinct, to protect our environment, support global communities and address Europe's escalating white goods dilemma, all while adding a touch of green.